Hi, I'm Pastor Chuck from East Earl, Pennsylvania, and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV. Good morning, my friends, all of my internet friends, all of you, wherever you are around the world, hello. We're here in uh, St. Agath, Manitoba, Canada. Just waiting for my clock to turn over here and let me do my pre-trip. We've been here for nine hours and 55 minutes. Five more minutes and I can begin my pre-trip. I've already done my pre-trip, but in five minutes, I can tell my e-log that I'm doing my pre-trip for 15 minutes. I'll probably go do it again. I don't know. You guys want to see my load? I've got a load of OSB board, which is like a particle board, sort of like a, I'll show you, like plywood, but not plywood. OSB board, you know what that is. Um, picked it up in Winnipeg the other day, and I'm bringing it down to Rothschild, Wisconsin. We might get all the way there today. I don't know. I might just go part of the way. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go see the load. I had to tarp it, so it's a little bit of fancy lumber. Bear with me, it might be a little windy. There she is in all of her glory. I bet you a real handsome man tarped that load. That's a handsome load. Wow. Hey, hey. And one lift at the back here yet. We got some real rusty rims here though. Those are not my rims. This isn't my trailer. Rusty. I don't like that. It's ugly. Well, the pre-trip went well the second time. Uh, so, if you guys are familiar with Volvo, you know that they like to be fancy. Unreasonably fancy, which makes everything really difficult to fix or to work on. So on Volvo, on most trucks, you have the hood latches on the outside of the truck that can open the hood, right? Volvo thought they were being smart and said, hey, let's put the latch inside the truck, just like a car. It's like a minivan, it's like a real minivan. So they put this latch underneath my steering wheel, I pull it and the hood pops open, just like your car, right? Well, one of those cables seized on me and I tried to pull it open and it wouldn't open. Uh, so I fiddled with it for a little bit, didn't think I was being too rough, but I was trying to get the hood to open, and the cable snapped. Now I can't get my hood open. So I tried to take apart the dash and fix it, but I'm not apt at that. I, I did get to it, but you have to take this entire front dash off to replace this one cable. The whole thing. And I could barely just get one little section off because it's all intertwined and meshed together and it's all plastic and it can all break. And if I break it, I, it's broken. <laughs> Sounds reasonable, right? If I break it, it's broken. But I don't want to break it. And I tried and tried and tried. I sat there for three hours trying to get my hood to open. Can't get my hood open. It's supposed to be a DOT blitz week which means that they're gonna be pulling us all into the scales, checking us all out. And if my hood doesn't open, that's a violation. How am I supposed to check my oil or add washer fluid or check anything underneath there if I can't get my hood open? So if Volvo would just have normal hood latches, this wouldn't have happened. But now we're on our way back to the yard. I'm gonna drop the trailer back in the yard, take the truck back to the shop. Not Volvo, I'm taking, them, taking it to Trucks Unlimited and Steinbeck. And if they can't get it in, I'll go to Martin Diesel. Those are, like I said, the other day, those are my two shops that I like. They can get me in real quick. But, uh, and uh, I'll ask them if they can just replace this stupid cable. That way, you know, while they're taking my entire dash apart and dismantling my entire truck down to the frame just to replace a cable, at least if they break anything, they have to replace it, right? And I can go home and get some work done, do something, or hopefully I can get this thing done by tomorrow, because if I have a load to pick up in Evansville, Wisconsin, Friday, it's Wednesday today, so 
I have to get moving tomorrow. Have to. Like tomorrow morning. I needed to be moving right now. I'm not up for a violation. I'm not getting a ticket because my hood won't open. Thanks, Volvo. You've really been ticking me off this week. I really don't like Volvos. I like this one because it's mine, but if I had a choice, I wouldn't be driving a minivan. Uh, I'd be driving good Peterbilt, Kenworth. Those are my two favorite trucks. Western Star, well, I had a bad experience with Western Star, but they're still good trucks. Good trucks. But Volvo. Everything's expensive with Volvos too. You know, I replaced my door latch a couple of months ago because my door wouldn't open, right? My door wouldn't open, now my hood won't open. But anyway, my door wasn't open, wouldn't open before, and the door latch was just the latch. It was like $350. Just the little click, click, click. Like three Bad words, right, Diesel? Don't say bad words. Don't say bad words. Don't say bad words. Volvo's a bad word. So I'm okay, whatever. We'll, we'll bring it in there. They'll get it fixed. And, uh... I hate bringing it to the shop for every little thing, but I honestly, I tried my best. I spent three hours, cut my hands up a little bit on the on the cables, and the cable snapped somewhere underneath there, and I can't even figure out where it leads to. It, it would take me all day, whereas, you know, someone who knows what they're doing, it'll take them a couple of hours, and boom, it's done. And I don't gotta worry about breaking it. Oh, my day, my day, my day. That's okay, that's trucking, right? That's what I signed up for, that's what I do. This is my life. It's not a job, it's my lifestyle. This is one of those days that you would uh, put, in the, put in the books as a bad day. Bad day. But not the worst, not the worst day, just a bad day. It could get worse, it could be worse. I mean, my truck's running, right? It's driving. Engine's okay, everything else is okay. Brakes are fine, tires are good. Now I bought new tires and another one. It's just a hood cable, for crying out loud. And they couldn't make it easy to just replace it. No, 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 they made it so that you need a, a rocket scientist to get to it. And six engineers and 25 techs. Figure out how to change it. You get it. So I'm just bringing the trailer back to the yard, like I was saying. Just in case my truck takes longer than I think it will and this load needs to get moving. I don't think there's any rush on this load. There's more of a rush on the load I'm supposed to be picking up. But honestly, I I know that they'll get me in as quick as they can, but it'll probably be tomorrow morning now because now it's already almost one o'clock in the afternoon because I've been fiddling around with this thing all morning. So I'll probably be home all day tomorrow yet and then I'd leave on Friday which we're gonna have to see if they'll let me pick up my load it's a preloaded trailer can I pick it up on Saturday probably not Meh. now I might end up being home till the weekend and then deliver this and pick up my load on Monday that's a lot of lost revenue for me all because of a hood cable so once again thanks Volvo thank you I don't think I'm gonna buy your trucks again. <laughs> Not a fan. You make everything too comfortable. But then again, I bet you the other trucks are just as hard to work on, right? I shouldn't be so hard on Volvo. I'll give you a break, Volvo, okay? I know there's a couple of you salesmen or something out there. I don't wanna get you too upset. New vehicles in general, they make them so complicated nowadays. Like when my dad was my age, you could like hop, like you, a typical car, you could practically hop into the engine bay beside the engine, inside the frame and work on the engine. Now it's like all full of electronics, computers. They do it on purpose, right? They do it on purpose so that you won't work on your own truck so that you'll bring it to them to fix. Joke's on them, I'm not bringing it to you, Volvo. Bringing it to... <laughs> Actually, I'm bringing it to Freightliner. Trucks Unlimited and Steinbeck is a Freightliner dealership. <laughs> they got better service than you got. Sorry. Sorry, Winnipeg Volvo. Not a fan. 
But this truck is, it's, it's spacious and roomy. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, I'm being a little bit uh, well, cynical right now. Is that the word? I'm just being a little bit, uh, whatever. Volvos are good trucks. Okay, they're good trucks. It's, they just wouldn't be my first pick. That's all. Well, I told Brit to not bother coming out to pick me up just yet. They may be able to fix it really quick, is what they said. So I'll just hang around here for a little bit and see what they say. Oh! Oh, that was nice. See, yeah, it's a Freightliner dealership, but they uh, they give me better service than Volvo. So I bring my Volvo to them. Maybe it's just that small town service, small town hospitality, I don't know. I should stop being so mean to Volvo. They're good, I'm, I'm sure they're good people. They've just gotten on my bad side. That's all. They can work their way back though. There is redemption available. Just saying. They can redeem themselves. I'm not heartless. Well, some good news does exist in this world. They uh, showed me how to bypass the hood release inside the cab. I can open my hood from outside the cab. Feel kind of silly. I wish I would have known that before, but I can get the hood open for now. They ordered the parts to fix it. And I'm gonna go deliver this freight into Wisconsin, then go grab that freight in Wisconsin, the other freight, bring it to Alberta, and then come home, and then they'll have everything ready for me then, and they'll fix it all up so that I can open the hood from inside the cab again, like a fancy Volvo driver. Now I'm just gonna have to be a little bit of a redneck Volvo driver for one trip. That's okay, as long as the hood opens, right? And as long as it stays shut, that's the big safety thing. If the hood would, wouldn't stay latched shut, well, then we got a safety issue. But it's, that's not the problem. The problem is that it won't open. But at least I can I can get it open, right? So uh, we're gonna deliver that freight from Wisconsin to Alberta Monday, get a load back here, and it's gonna go into the shop next Wednesday or Thursday and get the whole thing changed out. Even they were sort of rolling their eyes at how Volvo did their uh, uh, hood release system on their trucks. They say it's such a pain in the rear end trying to change all those cables out because they route it through there and in, in such ways where you, you need to take everything apart, right? And they didn't blame me for not being able to figure it out. <laughs> so they've done it a couple of times before already. They'll take good care of me. That's why I really like this shop here, you know? Can't say enough good stuff about them. They, they always they always have integrity, you know? They, they don't take advantage of me. They could have just said, oh, there's no way you can get it open. You're gonna have to get this fixed. We'll, we'll order the part for you and you can pay us to fix it and you know, just take my money to fix it. But no, they were people of integrity. They, they came to me and they said, well, we're gonna have to order the parts and we understand you're under a hot load right now. You gotta get it moving. We can show you how to open the hood without the hood release from outside the truck. So you can get the hood open to check the oil, fuel filters, add washer fluid. We can show you how to do that. And then you can come back when you're done this trip and we'll fix it all for you. Then we'll have the parts waiting for you. And they let me make an appointment. Unlike Volvo. <laughs> so, and that's how they are every time I'm there. You know, I never feel like I'm getting ripped off there. Never. That's why I sort of go out of my way now. I've just decided that's that's where I go. Those are my people. Trucks Unlimited. I like them. I have a lot of good stuff to say about Martin Diesel here in town too. Uh, if I ever bring my truck in there, I'll make. I'll let you guys know how the service went there. But they've always treated me very well there too. But there's a few other good shops in town, I'm sure. Like, uh, I can't sing everybody's praises. I can only sing the praises of people who have earned it with me. So, <laughs> but watch out. Watch out, you treat me like Volvo in Winnipeg did. Watch out. Lost a lot of business from me. Any business. And then I go and rant about it on YouTube. And that's not to, like, hurt hurt them or anything. I don't want to do that. But maybe it's just to warn other people, like, hey, this is how they treated me. And if they treated me like that, they're probably going to treat you the same way. Just a heads up. So go ahead and bring your truck there if you want to. But just expect that kind of service. It pays to be good to your customers. You never know who might have an audience to rant to afterwards, right? 
who might have almost 100,000 people. <laughs> Not that all of you guys watch my videos. There's like 94,000 subscribers on my channel, and I think I'm averaging like between 10 to 15,000 views per, per video. A lot of you not watching my videos. That's okay. That's okay. So uh, right now we're just running into Steinbeck. I've got my passport renewal papers all done and ready to hand in. I figure while I'm in town now, why don't I run into the passport office, get that on the way so that uh, I can get my new passport soon. I need one of those. I don't have a passport. I don't really have a ability to get into our beautiful neighboring country. If I can't get into that country, I'm very sad because I like visiting. Actually, if I don't have a passport, I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck in Canada. It's a big country. At least there's lots to see here, but it gets cold. I like to get away from the cold sometimes. The only problem with getting my passport stuff handed in is that it's uh, on Main Street here in Steinbeck and I'm in a big truck. Now, thank God this isn't a big city because this would be impossible then to find parking. But since we're in Steinbeck, maybe I can find some parking. It's right by that big building over there, our one big building. That's our uh, Steinbeck Credit Union. They just built that, uh, what, a year, a couple years ago? It's our one big fancy building. See it? See it? No more though. No more big buildings. We don't want to turn into a big city. At least I don't. I like the small town. I like the small town thing. But then again, you know, everything keeps growing. And I get it. I get it. Gives me a job to do too when stuff gets built. So That's my dilemma. I don't want things to grow, but I do want them to grow so that I can make money. But I don't want them to grow. That's, it's a dilemma I'm in all the time. So, where am I going to park? I think I'm going to park on this street here. I don't want to really park right on the main drag. Aha! Yes, I can park here right behind that car, right beside TD. As long as no one takes that before I get there. Nobody take that spot. Don't do it. Don't do it, VW. Don't do it. Thank you. None of you turn. I'm, I'm going to park right behind this car here. You'll see. Achoo! Woo! Excuse me. All right. All right. It's nice of you to organize this parade for me, but I got stuff to do. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Steinbeck drivers. Come on. There we go. All right, I'm going to park right behind this guy right here. Uh-huh. And I'll run over there, hand my stuff in, pay for my passport, and I'll be right back. And would you look at that, the grass is just as green on this side as it was on the other side. Welcome to the United States. We're in North Dakota. Legendary. That's what their sign says, and I imagine that their sign is in that tone as well. Legendary. It's actually a pretty neat state. You know, it's probably, I know it's one of those, like, what, what do they call them, flyover states or forgotten states. We're right there with you, North Dakota. Manitoba's a flyover province, too. Except I don't know about everyone else in Manitoba, but I kind of like it that way. So, uh, yeah. Looks like I'm going to be delivering this freight Friday early morning. Because this shipper that we're, pardon me, this receiver that we're uh, bringing this stuff to is one of those receivers that likes to go home early. So they're going home at 2.30 tomorrow in the afternoon middle of the day. Yeah, you know, day's barely half over. They going home. So uh, we're going to get there at, uh, apparently they get back at 6 a.m. on Friday. But on Friday, receivers are only there, or receiving hours are only from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it's even worse. Must be nice to have like a, a long weekend every weekend and a short day every day. Ah! But whatever, we're still on on target, on schedule, it's fine. I can just take it a little easier now. I can enjoy this riveting North Dakota scenery a little more uh, vividly. Take it all in without having to be in such a rush. Like, look at this. Have you ever seen such beautiful dirt? No? No? 
Well, you haven't seen beautiful until you've been to North Dakota, tell you what. Exciting place, man. Right next to Disneyland. I don't know how far I'm gonna go today then, because I have all day tomorrow to get there now. I technically, I could have went home tonight and left in the morning, I guess, but that would have been really rushed. Really, really rushed. I just, I wish I would have like, like known that this whole day would have been ruined by my hood latch snapping or whatever. Because I could have stayed home last night instead of sleeping in the truck. I could have woke up with my wife and enjoyed half a day with her at home and then left. Because we only got going at like 3.30 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon now. So I could have, could have just stayed home. Oh well. If only I could see into the future. Bimiji, Minnesota. Bimiji. I think I can park here. My trucking app that I use, it said they had truck parking here. Why is there no other trucks parked here though? Is truck parking at the back? In 400 meters, make a U-turn if possible. No, no, Mandy, I gotta find a place to park. Where's the truck parking? Your destination is on the right. Why is there no other trucks here? That makes me nervous. It does look like a truck stop. There's no other trucks here. Well, I don't want to park here and then get kicked out. Okay, I know you're going to laugh at me. Here goes. I got toothpaste in my eye. How do you manage that, you ask? Well, don't underestimate me. I got toothpaste in my eye. Oh, don't do that. There's no warnings on the toothpaste tube not to put any in your eye. I think they just take it for granted that you're not me. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I was putting it on my toothbrush, right? And as I was looking at it, I guess the end of it caught the the end of the toothbrush or the toothpaste tube or whatever, and it flicked up just a little piece of toothpaste and directly in my right there. Oh, that burned. Now the burning's gone, I'm fine. But now it feels like I have like an eyelash or a stone stuck there. Right where it hits, so it's obviously just really sore right now. She needs a good night's rest. Oh man. Hope I don't get a headache off that. I can sort of feel my head starting to uh, pressure up from that. Anyways, we're here. Uh, just went down the road to the next truck stop. It's better parking over here. But for some reason, like, I'm over here, right? Right here. My truck, my, my fancy new bug deflector. Which has been working pretty good, actually, yeah, my dad. I'm here, backed in, and uh, like there's a couple of trailers here and whatnot, and every other truck here nosed in. Which is odd, because, you know, sometimes... Well, I used to nose in more often. That was until I broke down or until my batteries died that one night in uh, Kelowna, BC. I was nosed into my spot, and my batteries died overnight, and then the tow truck guy who came to boost me couldn't reach my batteries or almost couldn't reach them because I was nosed in. Oh, this is driving me nuts. Uh, I just need to go lay down, close my eyes, and hopefully I'll feel better in the morning. If I look this way, then it doesn't bother me because you can tell right in my eye there where it's so red, right? Can you tell? Toothpaste does not go in your eyes. Let that be your lesson. You heard it here, folks. Trucker Josh vlogs. Toothpaste does not go in your eyes. So, uh, anyway, I'm gonna try to fix this and try to sleep this off. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you subscribe and tune in then. See you later. I'll be fine. I'll be fine.